All right, welcome to the Action Director tutorial series. Uh, Action Director, of course, is the Unity 3D plugin we've created at Felino Studio in order to make it easier for you to do all sorts of uh, interactions without using code, but relying especially on game components and nested inside game objects. So what are we covering today? Basic actions. Now, Action Director, to use a metaphor, is similar to a set of dominoes that you've set on the short edge. And so they're standing tall, and you push one, the others follow. And to begin with, we'll look at a very simple two-tile set where we're going to have one domino that is a run and therefore calls the action. You can think of it as the, the, the first domino that you push and it calls an action. So here I have a um, little icon, the Felino logo. And what I can do is, if I just take this object, um, actions can be in empty game objects or they can actually be inside a, um, an actual sprite like this one, um, depending on, on the complexity and the kinds of things you want to try. But we'll just do it over here for a, a simplicity's sake. Action Director is embedded directly inside the uh, the Unity uh, engine, and therefore it appears in your drop-down list for the components. So you find it here. And inside that, there are several uh, main categories. Here I have Color, Debug, Control, and Transform. Now these are the categories for the light version, uh, since we're covering just some basics. The full version has uh, quite a few more categories. Uh, including sound, animation, physics. So the first thing we want to do is, is get that run, the same one that, that I illustrated, and that's inside the control category. So place that over here. And next thing is we want to affect, visually affect this sprite. And one that um, is easy to, to communicate is the blink, which is inside the color. So, of course, a blinking effect, you'll be able to see it immediately. And let's just say we want it to blink 10 times. If there are child objects inside, you can decide whether or not it affects the, the child object. Uh, in this case, there are no ch children, no child objects inside here, so it's not needed. And we can have a duration, and in this case, we'll place 5 seconds. Now here, transform object. Now that's the object that will be affected. Now just because the action is nested inside this game object, it doesn't mean that um, it'll be affected automatically. So you have to go ahead and drag the object that's going to be affected. And so that's the logo. And of course you need to tie it to the run. So I can just go ahead and slip that in. And I want it to start on enable, so it means that as soon as I hit play, that action will start. Now we've seen kind of a very simple action. Um, and there's all sorts of actions that we can put here, but of course, just one simple effect isn't so interesting. What if we were to, say, uh, have parallel effects? Now, parallel effects are what we know as forks. So I'll run, and my next game component will be a fork, which will trigger two other actions. So, assuming that we want to keep this blink, um, we could also we also say that, hey, this icon is out over at the edge, and maybe we want to center it. So, probably want to move to, move to a certain specific point. In, the, in this case, zero, 0, So, let's go see. So, I'm going to go ahead and add my fork, which is in control. So move it up in the in the little stack. So the run is going to call a fork, 
So I've got to drag that in there. And my fork is going to have two prongs. It's going to have one of those actions as a blink. And another will be my move too. So transform move to so move to a specific point inside this space so what am I moving to I'm going to be moving to 0 0 uh, but I want to maintain the same z-axis uh, otherwise um, the ad object could move out of view here we go I'm going to take the same amount of time to move to so just so you can see it, uh, make sure to see it. So then after that, of course, I drag that event or that action into the fork. So my fork has two prongs, has two events that it's calling, the, lo the logo blink and the local move to. And just make sure that my run is also calling the fork. So on run. It will blink and move to the defined point. And so there it goes. Now, that was quite a linear path uh, and a linear type of animation. Uh, there's also some additional parameters that we can do to add flavor. Um, the blink we can leave as is. But what if um, we applied an ease to uh, this movement? And you'll see this, all these types of eases. It's not necessary to try them all out, but um, let's try one such as exponential out. Which means that as it gets closer to that point, it will exponentially slow down and so let's see that so we saw it move very quickly and then slow down another thing that we can uh, apply is um, we can apply a curve to this to this path. Right now it's just moving very directly, but what if you want to add just a little bit more of an arc? Uh, that requires to use a Bezier vector, so some kind of point in between these two, an imaginary point. Um, over here I have a node that I've created. Uh, it's just going to be a visual cue for us. So this is the center point. Let's take this node over here. And let's move that. Okay, so here's the center point. And if we want to have a nice curve, let's use this point over here. And now I have some XY parameters that I can go and enter over here. So we have that left node. So it's minus 282 and 362. All right. And of course we should still keep it at the same uh, on the same z axis otherwise it could go behind other uh, elements inside the frame. So and of course we want to Clear the Bayesian vector to true. So, because of that ease, we didn't really see it go, but let's see if um, we'll just make put it to none so we keep that motion linear and so we can really see it kind of move towards this point before it curves down. There we go. And we could exaggerate that even more. So now, it will. this is a much more severe curve. This is the line here. So now it's 
you know, try to draw a curve between these three points, its start, its Bezier vector, and its end. And the parameters over here are 216, 278. So there we go, we saw it really bow towards that point. So this is the kind of flavor that you can add to your actions. And just like that, we've created uh, some animations without any kind of uh, scripting, uh, just using our, our assets or, and game components that are available to you with the Action Director. Thanks for tuning in.